Hello everyone and welcome to the Plant Care Tips channel. Today I am sharing philodendron care tips and types. The philodendron genus contains hundreds of species of beautiful foliage plants. Their leaves are typically large, green, and glossy, and philodendrons are great for adding a bit of their native tropical flair to your home. These popular houseplants are known for their easy-growing habits, and there are two types of philodendrons to choose from, vining and non-climbing. The vining varieties grow several feet, usually requiring some support structure to climb on, such as a trellis or around a basket. Non-climbing varieties grow upright and are excellent foliage plants for containers. In general, philodendrons have a fast growth rate. Philodendrons are also a great plant choice to purify the air in your home. They're best planted in the spring, but houseplants typically can be started with success at any time of year. They are toxic to pets and humans if ingested. Philodendrons make great houseplants thanks to their generally low-maintenance nature, but it's still important to maintain proper growing conditions to keep your plant healthy. Care for your philodendron by aiming to mimic its natural tropical environment, provide plenty of warmth and moisture near a sunny window. Beware of direct sunlight, it can burn their delicate leaves. Keep your plant's leaves looking and functioning their best by regularly wiping them off with a damp cloth. During warm weather, put philodendron houseplants outside in a shady spot to get some fresh air and natural light on occasion. This species typically grows best in partial sunlight. Philodendrons need sun, but they would naturally receive dappled light under a tropical canopy rather than direct light. Indoors, set them up by a window that gets bright, indirect light. Too little light can result in leggy growth with lots of space in between the leaves, but too much light can cause many of the leaves to turn yellow at the same time. Only a few leaves yellowing is typically just normal aging. Philodendrons like loose, acidic potting soil that's rich in organic matter. The soil must have good drainage. For container plants, it's recommended to replace your philodendron soil every couple of years or so. These plants are sensitive to salts that accumulate in the soil via watering, which can cause leaf browning and yellowing. You can periodically flush out some of the salts by watering your container thoroughly until water comes out of its drainage holes. Eventually, the soil will need refreshing. When determining how often you should water your philodendron, find the proper watering schedule by checking its soil, water this plant whenever the top inch of soil has dried out. These plants generally like a moderate amount of soil moisture. Both overwatering and underwatering can cause the leaves to droop, so gauge when it's time to water by the soil dryness rather than the leaves. Philodendrons don't do well sitting in soggy soil, as this can lead to root rot. The non-climbing varieties tend to have a little more drought tolerance than the vining species. Reduce your watering schedule for indoor plants during the winter. The temperature tolerance of philodendrons varies based on the species. In general, they should not be exposed to temperatures below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Indoors, protect them from cool drafts, such as those from an air conditioning vent. These plants like humidity, so you might have to boost humidity around your philodendron if you live in a dry climate. To do so, mist the plant every few days with water from a spray bottle. You can also place the container on a tray of pebbles filled with water, ensuring that the bottom of the container isn't touching the water, which can lead to root rot. Use a balanced liquid fertilizer monthly on your plant in the spring and summer. Follow the product label instructions to use the correct amount and reduce feeding to every 6 to 8 weeks in the fall and winter. If your plant isn't getting enough food, its growth will be slower than normal and its leaves might appear smaller than usual. If your philodendron vines get too long or leggy, cut them back using sterilized pruning shears or scissors. The best time to do this is in the spring or summer. You can safely give your philodendron a light trim any time of year to remove yellowing leaves and trim spindly growth. It's best to cut just above a leaf node. Take your stem cuttings and use them for propagation. Tropicals need to be overwintered in the house if you do not live in a tropical zone. Many tropicals and common houseplants do well through the winter indoors and adapt quickly to indoor conditions. As the days shorten and the temperatures cool, philodendrons need a little less water than during the warmer growing season. Also, only water when the top of the soil starts to become dry to the touch when indoors. 
Before you bring the plants inside, use pruners to cut off the yellowing leaves or long leggy stems, then check for mold, signs of decay, and insects. Philodendrons don't have any serious issues with pests or diseases. However, they can be susceptible to common houseplant pests, including aphids, mealybugs, scale, thrips, and spider mites. Treat pests with a mix of water and dish soap, natural insecticidal soap, or horticultural oil. If using dish soap, mix 1 tablespoon of dish soap per quart of water, then spray the whole plant from top to bottom. In terms of plant diseases, philodendrons are susceptible to the mosaic virus. This virus is identified by small yellow lesions or patterns on your plant's leaves. During warm seasons, you can place the plant outside and remove its affected leaves. Hose down the rest of the leaves, removing any dust on their surface. Apply a diluted nitrogen-rich fertilizer to the soil to help the plant grow back stronger. Philodendrons are easygoing plants that acclimate well to indoor living and can also propagate easily. They are prone to some wellness issues when water, sun, and soil conditions are not being met. Here are some signs to look for and how to handle them. Yellowing leaves. Several issues can cause yellowing leaves, such as giving it water that's too cold, not offering enough sunlight, or exposing the plant to too much bright light. If the older leaves are yellowing, then you may be underwatering the plant. If the younger bottom sets of leaves turn yellow, you may be overwatering the plant. In most cases, adjust these factors to see your plant rebound. Browning leaves. If your plant develops browning leaf edges, you may be shocking your plants with water that's too cold. Also, if your plant's leaves start to get brown and mushy, you are likely overwatering. Brown leaf edges that start to curl indicate the plant needs more water and less sun. Make adjustments accordingly. Browning leaf tips with yellow halos can indicate that your plant needs more humidity. You can mist the plant's leaves or place the plant container atop a tray of pebbles filled with water to raise the humidity. Don't submerge the plant base, keep it right above the waterline. If you've watched it so far, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.